Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Betty White in the afterlife. Yeah, I know she just transitioned, but we got to talk to her. I was so excited to hear that she decided to cross over the last day of 2021. Yeah. <sighs> because why? Because that's what happens, you guys. People transition. A lot of people usually leave at the end of a year. Now, I have tried my best on over the course of my work on in the public forum here, like on YouTube on my Above Life channel here on YouTube and also my Fairy Grasshopper, Fairy Grasshopper channel on YouTube to share with you why that might be. And the what it basically boils down to is like an energy thing. It's an energy thing. And so the fact that Betty, Betty White died on December 31st, 2021 at the age of 99 is so perfect. And it's classic Betty classic. She's not dumb enough to go into the next year, 2022. And it has to be a little dramatic and just a little like, Hey, I'm out. Okay. You guys, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You guys I'm done. And I also feel like she probably feels like we, we don't need her anymore. We've got her own hope. She's got us through the COVID and the stress of the last couple of years and some many, many presidential elections. And so she's done her part. She's ready to go. She's ready to retire from humanity. So let's bring her in and have a chat with Betty White from the afterlife. Hi, Betty, nice to see you. She's got her hair. She looks older like she did right? Like on Golden Girls, that's how she looks like. Rose Nyland. That's the way I know you. That's how I know who you are. And then also, um, I know you were in like a, another sitcom, I want to say like Hot in Cleveland or something. And then also Stand Up and all, I mean, so many, I know you had a great fruitful career, but I know you as go, from Golden Girls and so do a lot of people and now all the Golden Girls are together in the afterlife. Okay. So I have to know, first thing I have to know, did you reunite with the Golden Girls? She says, I saw a couple husbands. <laughs> I'm not saying whose, she says. <laughs> so, all right. Why did you choose to transition on the last day of 2021? She says, it was my time. It was my time to go. She says, don't you think I overstayed my welcome? She says, <laughs> and then she's really super honest, you guys. Like I feel heartfelt energy, like getting empathic energy coming in from Betty that I think her mind wasn't quite right. It looks like a little bit of a dementia and it might just be a natural from the aging process. Um, I don't think it's Alzheimer's, but it's definitely like a little bit of a dementia. And she's making me feel like she wasn't fit any longer. She wasn't fit any longer. And then she's also making me feel like she didn't want to, oh, I don't know if I want to say it that way. It's hard when specific words come in and stuff. And it, I, I feel like it's not very respectful to say it, even though the spirit's saying it, it's a little tough, you know, to do that. But she literally says, I didn't want to embarrass myself and do like a, some kind of a public event or something for my hundredth birthday. She said, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. And she's, she says, um, She's saying something besides Prince Philip left before he was a hundred. If it's good enough for the royalty, it's good enough for me. Okay. So a lot of people consider you a trailblazer and she literally shows me Louise Hay. Louise Hay from Hay House Publishing, like a healer. If you're in any kind of the healing arts, if you're a psychic medium, if you're um, in any of the healing or clearing stuff, You've heard the name Louise Hay and you know, because I've channeled her also, she has a playlist here on Above Life channel, Louise Hay. And she, I consider a trailblazer. And so Betty is giving me the vibe of her that she says, I have been put 
in the caliber of someone like that, she says that is um, kind of leading the way or breaking barriers, she says, and it's not, it's not really about that. And she says, it doesn't, it's not my life, she said, wasn't about me doing something extraordinary. It was about me being my, okay, that's really kind of cliche, but I'm gonna say it, my best version of myself, my best self. This is tricky a little bit because it's so soon since she passed, but she's super connected to her human life. So I can see that. Does she have a son, you guys? Because I feel like there's a young man. I'm not sure who that is. And then she gives me the name Peter. And then Howard. And then Jack. I don't know if it's Susie or Sally. She's making me feel like she's reminiscing and reconnecting. She's doing both reminiscing and reconnecting. Why? Okay. And then she's showing me like Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you guys something about Betty. <laughs> She's kind of, she has a dirty mind. Let's just be honest. You do. She's cracked some jokes with me and sworn. And I'm like, Oh, Betty, people do not know this side of you. She says, Oh, sure. They do. She says, my friends do. Oh yes. Some people. Yes. She said, Bridget, people will not be surprised. Okay. She says, I might look like a sweet old lady, but I got the mind of a 65 year old. Okay, I'm not 65, so I really can't relate to that, but okay, what does that mean? And she says, like, my whole life's ahead of me. Like, she says, I always had this sense of the way, the way you move through life is like, the good stuff is coming next. She says, um, it's not about not enjoying the present or, or being here now, she says, but there's always, there's always more to look forward to. She's like, there's always good stuff ahead. And she says, um, she's making me feel like she struggled and why she was very challenged in her life. She's also making me see that the role of women has been very um, subservient and very much um, uh, trying to get decent roles and trying to get some credibility and accreditation, she says, is like a minefield. She said it's much better now, she says, but there's still work to be done. And she says, there's so many accomplished women, artists, um, producers, writers, actresses, comedians that deserve to be recognized, she says, and that aren't. So are you bitter or angry, upset about that? Like, there's not a feeling of that. She says, no, she says, I'm on the post transition high. Like she's telling me, she's like, I feel like I'm high. She says, like, I'm just like, hey, everything's good right now. Everything's good right now. She's making me feel like she's kind of almost euphoric. And she says, well, wouldn't you be? She says, I lived a full life. I lived a full life. She says, I, I lived a good life. She says, I can go and I can complain. I can complain about my aches and pains. I can complain about outliving so many of my friends and my colleagues. And, but she says, but I don't need to because so many others of you guys are complaining is what she's saying. Ooh, Betty, are you going to give us some advice? And she says, yeah, stop complaining. She actually says, stop pissing and moaning. I told you guys, Betty has a potty mouth. Or did I didn't actually say it that way. I just said she's a little. And I like that. She's like, you want to have a beer? I'm like, no, I don't know. Not at like two o'clock in the afternoon. Thanks. And I don't drink beer anyway, but that's all right. But he's like, you want to have a beer? No. Um, stop pissing and moaning, she says. Stop complaining. She says, everybody has problems. Everybody has a right a right to complain. And she says, the best thing you can do as humans is to stop comparing yourself to each other and start working together. And I'm not talking about kumbaya and um, 
she's like, I'm not talking about the, uh, the stuff about working together, like on the surface, like she says, like helping a little bit. She says, I'm talking about making, helping, being part of just a normal thing that everybody does, helping each other out, showing up for each other. She says, if you show up more uh, fully, like more, be more real in your relationship, she says, you're going to get a lot farther. Everybody's going to get better. Everybody's going to feel better. She says, the reason why there's so much mental health issues and mental health crisis is because everybody's not being themselves. Everybody's so busy placating one another and trying to avoid doing things that that's why you're complaining about how bad you have it or about how hard things are. It's because you're not showing up for any of the things you can't. She's like, you can't get the good stuff without the work. And she says, the work isn't intended necessarily to be this big hardship, she says, or pain or suffering. The work is, in, is, is, is just literally showing up, being someplace on time, ready, with the best attitude you can have, looking for a good time. Not expecting other people to create that for you, but showing up with the expectation that you're bringing it. You're bringing yourself. You're bringing a good attitude. You're bringing a good outlook. You're expecting the best, not from other people, but from yourself. You're bringing it forward. She says, when you bring it, then other people respond to you that way. And then your day doesn't seem so crappy. And then your life gets better, she says. There's so much emphasis, she says, on looking at other people and how other people are doing things or how they're, they're um, handling themselves. There's been a lot of that, she says, in the last two years, a lot of it. There's been a lot of blame and a lot of scapegoating and a lot of pointing fingers. And she says, how, how much good has that done us? Really, how much good has that done us? <clears throat> she has a point. You have a point, Betty. You, you have a very valid point. And she's literally showing me like a martini glass, like a Cosmo, like a cosmopolitan, like a martini glass, like a, what's with the day drinking, Betty? What's with the day drinking? Is there anyone in the afterlife that you were anticipating meeting again or can reconnecting with or looking forward to seeing? She says, yes, Bridget, I have my Marilyn Monroe shirt on. She actually says Mary. I don't know which Mary she's talking about, but Mary is what she's saying. Mary, I wanted to talk to Mary. She's showing me, um, I see uh, George Burns. I don't know if they were friends, but he, I can see the cigar and stuff. She's showing me like Frank Sinatra. I was such a fan, she said. Such a fan. She's like fangirling <laughs> a little bit. You seem very um, like jubilant, like um, like you're like party like. And she says it's New Year's. Oh, I'm recording this on New Year's, you guys. So I'm actually recording this on 2022, January 1st. She's like, I just died yesterday, Bridget. Give me some time to adjust. Hmm. Can you tell us what transitioning was like leaving your body and moving into the afterlife? Because I know it's different for everyone. You know, there's some common themes we've heard here on Above Life Channel, but how was it for you? She says soft. It's pretty soft. She says heart. She's showing me like heart failure is what she's showing me. Did you know you were going to die? I feel like she wasn't conscious. Like almost like woozy lightheaded and then gone. I could feel my body. She said, I can feel it from my legs going up. Everything just getting, um, she says, you know how, like when your body, your like hand falls asleep or your foot falls asleep like that, but it's not tingling, everything's kind of heavy. And then you can't really feel it. She said, it's like that kind of numbing from the legs coming up, she says. And then kind of getting a little like woozy kind of like thing. And she says, no, I wasn't scared. Like I'm, I'm thinking it in my head. 
are you afraid? Were you afraid? I wasn't scared. She says, no, I wasn't scared. And then she's showing me her, she says, my Nana was there. She says, for me, I was greeted. She says, my Nana was there. My Nana. It's like her mom's mom is what it looks like to me. Were you adopted? That is interesting. All of a sudden I see an adoption scenario. I don't know if there was somebody that had a baby in her family that was given up or it was like one of those things. Um, or if she actually herself was adopted or if she had adopted children, I'm not sure, but there's an adoption piece here that she's showing me. She says her Nana, she shows me going into the afterlife. And then she says, adoption is what comes up. That that's a feeling I get. And she says, it's kind of hard because like, it's like a little bit of a secretive kind of thing. Like it's not well-spoken. Um, untold stories is what she's telling me. I think she has a sister. She's saying something about sister somebody. Unless it's like a cat, like a nun or something, sister, someone. Interesting. Oh, hmm. I'm not sure what I'm seeing, you guys. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So it wasn't painful. It was kind of a natural thing. Yes. And I see a daughter. Did she have a son and a daughter? Um, and then I see Alan, 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 someone, Alan, the name Alan, I'm getting a lot of names. Like she's throwing out names of people and stuff. And I'm not really sure how they all connect you guys. I just, just connecting with her. It's hard to channel someone for me right after they passed. Cause it's so, you know. There's information in a lot of places. Okay, that's that's probably why. Or it's just me, and maybe I'm just not that good. Oh, we know that's not true. All right. She says, oh, I like you. You're sassy. You got fire. She says, you're fiery. I like you. She says to me, I like you. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. She really likes animals. Mm -hmm. I see like dogs. Dogs, pets, dogs, it looks like not cats really as much, but dogs, more of a dog person. Dogs, I see. Hmm. Do you have any advice for us as we're now living Betty-less in 2022? Do you have any advice for us? Since you kind of just up and left, Betty. She's like, oh, it was my time. She said, I overstayed my welcome. She's like, if you, whatever you look for is exactly what you're going to see. And she says, so when you focus on the positive, the sunny days, not the clouds that are in the sky, but the sun that's there, that's the meaning of life, she says. That's not just how you get through your days, but it's how you make things better for yourself. And when you make things better for yourself, you make things better for other people. She is showing me drinking. I don't know if she had a drinking problem or if alcoholism is something that was in her family or affected her, but she's showing me drinking. So I'm just gonna mention that. I don't know if you guys are mega fans, you can put that in the comments below. As to what that's like. She's saying, I'm making the tour is what she's saying. I'm doing the rounds. Okay. So what does that mean? I know what it means, but can you say it? Can you articulate it so I can say it to people so that in a way that they understand it? She says, it means that after you die, you have time to kind of go and visit people that are your loved ones, your family, your friends, have visitations, and people can kind of schedule appointments with you where they can get insight or information initially right after you cross over or during the first, like she says, seven days to seven to 21 days is what she's saying. I've seen it until the funeral or the memorials, and then I see the person kind of fully embodying their spiritual form. She's not stuck. She's not in between, but this is the time when people can feel her as a lot. So if, whether you're a fan or a family member, you can connect and feel her more readily and easier. You don't have to be a, like a professional psychic or a medium or know how to do that. It's so much easier now. She says, and it's not just during the dream state, 
like when you're dreaming and you have thoughts of her, but you can literally have conversations with her and you'll be able to hear her, hear her in your mind by thoughts responding to you, hear her in your heart by feelings and information that comes kind of in clumps, like a paragraph kind of form of energy. Or she says, actually have a conversation, actually out loud, have a conversation with her. She said, it's going to make you feel like you're crazy, but you're not. Well, relatively speaking, she says, everything's relative. And then she's showing me like Family Feud, Richard Dawson, Hollywood Squares, um, the, and the Brady Bunch, that's random. She's so, I don't know if she was like a guest on any of these shows, Family Feud, Richard Dawson, there's got to be a connection to him. That's funny because I just had a connection to him the other day. I think he's still alive, but I had a, I saw a thing come up on my YouTube and I was like, what? Family Feud, Richard Dawson originally. And old game shows. And then Hollywood Square, she shows me. And then she shows me the, the Brady Bunch for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the squares. It might be just the squares, you guys. Whatever, I think it was Hollywood Squares with the big squares, right? That's because I hear the name Hollywood Squares, but then I see squares and like the Brady Bunch thing. It, it, this is the way I get information. It's weird, but it works for me. I feel like I'm all over the place, Betty. It's, she says, Bridget, it's because I'm new. I'm really new. I'm, I'm, I'm new to this. I'm new to this because she's making me feel kind of poppy in my head, like bubbly in my head a little bit. Like, hmm, interesting. Well, I think that's good for now. I just wanted to make sure I made the connection with you so that other people could have an idea or understanding that you're okay, right? She's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. She says, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But now you guys have to be good. She's like, I'm trusting you guys. She's like, it's like mom left the house, no big parties. If you do have big parties, have fun and be responsible. <laughs> and it's kind of like, um, she's encouraging us to live to not complain so much, to focus on the bright side of things as we step into the new year. And she says, it's going to be crazy still. Like, it's not going to be easy, but you can, you can do it. She says, you can enjoy it. It's not just about getting through it. It's about being present and enjoying it, like showing up, you know, that's what she's talking about. All right. Thanks, Betty. It was nice to meet you. Nice to see you here in the afterlife. <laughs> Thank you for watching you, the viewers here on Above Life channel. I hope Betty and I have inspired your spirit and filled you with hope today, encouraged you to live your life. It's your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.